<laughs> so what was the high of your day? There, I took a nap, I guess. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. <laughs> I was about to be there. Is that one? <laughs> There's always a high. It doesn't mean it was like an amazing moment, but... That also means, obviously, there's worse moments, you know? Mm Kind of like pick from the worst. (laughs) So my high day was that... It's there, I promise. <laughs> she's, she's somewhere there. <laughs> like my three, the act, the three moments I actually had <laughs> are blending together, and I'm like, hmm, which one was my my high? I guess having dinner with my mom. Mm-hmm. My high was because like, I don't always get I. to do that. Yeah. So nice, nice. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Red Rum and Red Wine Podcast podcast where we talk about murder mystery mishaps and uh what makes us happy which apparently is not a lot (laughs) my name is christian my name is sarah oh guys 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 guys. today's monday right yeah it's been like the mondiest of mondays like the (laughs) most mundane mondays that mondays will allow my dog didn't even get out of bed until five 5 p.m today yeah (laughs) i like actually took a nap today which if uh you're me you know that that's like not yeah but high fucking five. high five cheers for those uh <laughs> that can't see i'm fucking maybe you can tell from my voice i feel like death and dying and this is a shot of life aka nyquil nyquil hey. please sponsor <laughs> <laughs> um yeah nyquil i actually like your uh Z-Quil stuff <laughs> yeah. sleepy time I'm like, this isn't even NyQuil. It's like the fucking drug brand. Equate. Um, (laughs) Equate. Shout out, though, because I fuck with you. Yeah. And shout out, Florida. You are the shot glass of today. (laughs) (laughs) My friend visited Florida, and all I got was this this lousy jigger. (laughs) Lousy what? The lousy jigger. Like a little, you know, like shot jigger. But yeah, yeah, what's up? Oh my god. Sorry. Um deeply apologizing for how the next few weeks play out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick. Sarah's traveling. I and know that we're not getting this episode out tomorrow, probably. I like need to sleep. But um we're hoping, fingers crossed, after Christmas we can get back to regular scheduling. We wanna say next week, but we just really don't know how it will play out with uh Sarah traveling back and whatnot. So at some point, we're going to go back to Tuesday, Thursday postings, we hope, within, like, the next two weeks. Yeah. So, bear with us. And Y'all are still getting episodes. It's just yeah. not on our normal posting days. We want so. to appease all ten of the people that follow. So, I mean, you're definitely getting two episodes. It's just, you know, it's, I love you. it's a mystery as to when. That's the fun of it. Yeah. 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 So, what are we, we drinking on, <laughs> on your side? <laughs> Sorry, half flash. <laughs> okay. So, I uh, am drinking Hopstorm IPA. Nice. It's a cool can. It's like a ship in a storm. I do like it. Cute. Anyways. Cute, cute. It's from BJ's. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Well, hell's yeah, BJ's. Well, too bad, too. I I do have a beer. I don't really know if I'm going to touch it. I've had a few sips, but I got my trusty Ruby grapefruit. It's been a second since I've brought this baby out on the pod. It's mm-hmm. definitely like more of a springy time drink, but I just needed something white to yeah, keep something me going. Yeah, like that year round. Hey, and it might help your um, night cool. Yeah, that's what I'm just, thinking. Just a little bit. That's I'm what not I'm like thinking. condoning it. As like, we're not saying to do it, hobby, but if you happen to take a shot of NyQuil, you can also drink a beer and stay up and feel the effects of that. Wow. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's all fine and dandy here. But um, yeah, shall we just? Uh... Oh, yeah. So I think we have something to just mention really quick. We want to talk about and spread awareness on. Uh, yes. Within, you know, 
this audience and the true crime community. Yeah. There was a uh, case that Sarah and I recently saw. There is a documentary about it out on Hulu uh, called Dead Sleep. And it goes over the death of Brooke Preston that was killed by their roommate, Randy Herman Jr. And uh, basically this asshole is trying to say that he was sleepwalking throughout the whole thing. I have not seen the Hulu documentary kind of out of respect for the petition that we're about to talk about because the family did leave a petition on change.org. I tried to do a quick quick search to find it, um, but I'll definitely have it linked below if we can find it. But yeah, the family just wasn't involved in the documentary. They have a lot of uh, anger towards it. And apparently, like, they weren't, they didn't ask, get asked for approval for it at all. Like, and they said, like, we don't want this documentary out. And I know, like, uh, he's trying to get a new trial and whatnot. So it's just a heavy, heavy moment for the family. And it, it shouldn't be added by all this media attention that is kind of skewing the evidence and not something that the family of the victim is condoning. So we read that and we just, you know, it really hit our hearts. It was a really messed up case to read about, but we highly suggest that if you are listening, if you're interested, if you want to sign the petition, like I said, we'll try to have it linked down below, but yeah, it's just unacceptable. Sorry. <laughs> what she said, it's, it's uh, the fa- you know, the family is, there's just an extra layer of trauma when people are basically, it's a fine line because we talk about true crime stories and all this, all uh, types of stories and, but when you're a big name like Hulu or whoever is getting paid from Hulu is exploiting the story almost without the family's approval. It's kind of fucked. I mean, it's fucked up. Yeah. So. Okay. So before this a Robitussin run, <laughs> I wish Robitussin starts busting. <laughs> so before this medication wears off, let's get into my story. So. A quick little trigger warning because I finally remembered to put one at the beginning. Uh, it is actually very needed. This case involves children, particularly infants, particularly on that particular infant side. Oh, because no. for today's case, I will be do- I will be talking about the Japanese practice of killing your baby, otherwise known as mabiki. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I thought I'd uh, branch out, could do something a little bit different, but just as interesting. So I hope yeah. that you stick around. I know it's a little bit historical, but huge shout out to Lynn Fami, Lynn Fami. I'm pretty sure it's Lynn Fami on YouTube because he is like one of the only other content creators I saw that made a video about this. And uh, to research this topic, it's actually quite hard. Like I could only find a textbook. So y'all have me fucking reading a textbook. Uh, during my break you're welcome wow yeah so he does a really good job talking about the topics his videos are really fucking interesting and he's pretty funny so definitely go check him out if you're watching this um not like he would ever see this but hi you're i like your videos (laughs) (laughs) hot flash so before we start it's it's gonna be a fun fact kind of episode not so fun really but our first fact that I have is before 1790s, uh, infant side to the world, pretty much, I'm not just saying to Japan, uh, it's everywhere, was seen as ethically unproblematic and even socially responsible. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quite a rep. Yeah. <laughs> but again, <clears throat> like I said, I'm talking about everyone here. Like us Americans, we right. love to dump our babies in dumpsters on prom night. So we just like, you know, <laughs> different traditions. It just... Yeah. like tomato tomato yeah potato <laughs> potato <laughs> oh uh, yeah you don't click off if you don't like a baby death oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what historians do know of the topic of mabiki is that is it is from the edo period which is from 1603 to 1868 she's ancient she's she's <laughs> back there but honestly not that ancient and then honestly when you see like when it stops uh no not ancient uh, yeah oh. well because i consider oh. us ancient so true yeah <laughs> try pushing 30 you will mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but you see 
really this practice spike in the first half of the Edo period. Edo period. I'm saying words wrong. I'm so sorry. I'm going to try my best, but I am very... Edo. Yeah, I don't know if I can help you. Edo. Edo. I, I believe it's Edo. How uh, he was pronounced... Linfamy was pronouncing it was Edo. So. Okay. I'm trying my best. <laughs> there was a statistical fact that around 20% of children during that time were actually killed by their parents. Uh, but from the textbook that I read... Oh, God. I'm so sorry. I forgot his name. He did a great job educational wise. I will have it linked down in the resources below. But he gave a stat that if you included the abortions going on during that time, which weren't many, uh, it would be about four out of every 10 children being oh. killed by this method. Yeah. Well, I wonder what it is today. Uh, I'll, I'll get into it. Okay. <clears throat> I was like going to say it, but I was like, oh, just wait. So it's mainly due to the fact that. Um, like I had said, abortion is not very common during this time. It's one extremely dangerous. Like we, right. it, it, especially during that time period, there's no way for you to successfully know if you're fucking doing one. It's like you're gonna poison yourself and like hope right. for the right dosage and or we're something. We're in the 1800s, right? Uh, 16, 16 to 18. Oh yeah, so it was illegal as fuck, anyways, too. So it's mostly done in secrecy and whatever. You're probably getting into it. Yeah. Well, yeah. it was like actually not like that like abortion wasn't i'll I'll get into it but like abortion wasn't really seen as like a bad thing in fact it wasn't really like seen as abortion which i'll get into well oh and i'm also thinking of in like england and america yeah um like the show harlots on hulu Mm -hmm. and shit like whatever i forgot we're in china (laughs) japan japan (laughs) Yeah. yeah but no it's very um and a really interesting fact like i binged linfamy's video so <laughs> he's just like had some really good content but uh, one of his other videos that i don't know if it was within the same time period but japan was very much like a sexualized country in a way that um I know for the upper class, it was almost seen as like, if you weren't a virgin, if you were a virgin, virgin, you were seen as like having a demon in you. Like being a virgin was not a good thing. They really wanted you to like be sexually, whatever. Like you could have affairs. You just couldn't like be open about it. I don't know. It was very, very different time frames. Don't know what happened, but yeah, people were fucking swinging and banging back in the day. Yeah, man. Yeah. So there were kind of a lot of like, uh oh, because uh, we don't have birth control. Like the <laughs> the birth control that they had back then was like literally one of them was like you would shove uh, bamboo like sandpaper up your <gasps> vagina. <laughs> and like or like you would put like a little something on your Some kind like of an wine. incense on your Ooh. stomach and like burn it or like a herb. It's just like birth control is nothing. So I'm sure quite a. F- like pregnancy was kind of a common thing. Right. So the reason why, <clears throat> and I kind of get into it, like the place Japan is really kind of divided on their views. And I'll post a photo of it in uh, on Instagram or, or I'm going to try and get one here this time. But, oh, I lost my spot. Where was I? But um, it was it would be very expensive for these gynecologists to get the herbs that were needed to perform an abortion. And the fact that an abortion was so dangerous, like on not to say that childbirth back then wasn't dangerous because it was and it was very much like. They if you had to pick between one or the two, they would say that giving birth was actually safer and then killing it rather than trying to kill it preterm and like yeah so that's I guess kind of where this practice comes along and there's a it's a lot more too which I'm getting into I keep saying that I'm sorry I'm already just like whoa yeah well because it's all like common and natural and childbirth for you know some of these things happen but for it to be such a practice it's like whoa yeah so like I had said previously their term for abortion wasn't even used in until the second half of pregnancy so if you were a woman that had an abortion in your first half it was what they called an acceleration of a menstrual flow so they wouldn't even call it an abortion and even 
after the child is born, like they don't see it as a child, which yeah. I'll, I get into. Well, it's almost like probably instead of a, an abortion, it's like a forced miscarriage. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they see, yeah, it's like <clears throat> what side of it kind of are you? Yeah. And yeah, and the whatever birth, forms of birth control were allowed were s- seen as like highly disrespectful if you were to give it to your wife or something mm-hmm. like that. So it, it's. It's so fucking Like, you'd weird. rather kill a baby than use birth control. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, the mindset wasn't, I yeah. mean, this is back in the day. I mean, so. whatever. I, I get it. And, yeah. But I'm not support, you know, we, we, not, I'm not saying I support it, but we talk. I see your ancient views. Yeah, we talk <laughs> about, we, we digest a lot. Uh, it's, like I said, this is like eight pages, so I, I kind of get into them. Yeah. <clears throat> so the story that I was talking about in the textbook is basically about a merchant named Shinbei and he goes to the shrine Itsukushima Itsukushima near Hiroshima and when he enters the inn he encounters this guest and the guest basically tells him like I have heard that there is someone here that is staying at this inn that commits infanticide and there is just no way that I can stay in this inn while they house such like mis- uh, miscreants or like such insidious people. Yeah. And what the guy doesn't know is that um, Shinbei is the dude from this town where they commit infanticide. So he's like kind of uh, having this guy come up to him and be like, how dare this insidious person? And he's like, oh shit, well, I'm the insidious person. It's like, let me talk to your fucking manager. And you're like, I'm the manager. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, but he kind of like plays it cool and I think he asks him a question and basically the guest tells him that the town that he's from, Izumo, has a practice that you do not kill your child. You know, if it's born, you take care of it. And the gynecologist that did live in the town that would perform abortions, like everyone would hate him. He would be pushed to the outskirts of the town. And there was even like a childhood fairy tale that they made up saying that if a child were to point their finger in the direction of the gynecologist's gate, that their finger would rot off. (gasps) So it's like, it's very... you. So what I'm trying to say with that story is like there's a huge divide within Japan. Not everyone is okay with it. And like in the photo that I'm going to post, you see that it's really like the northern and southern tips of Japan that are okay with it. And when you get to like the coast or the middle, people are kind of like, this is a crazy fucking practice and you shouldn't uh, kill your baby. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. But even with all of these you know polar extremes that are happening with in japan there is one thing that they tend to find in common which believe it or not is their caring nature oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so uh linfamy and the textbook that i read read gave awesome examples but uh japanese really cherished life to the point where in order to get silk you would have to boil a silkworm in order to collect the thread and like let's say you're farming you need to like dig up soil you're killing bugs while you're digging up the soil these workers would leave monuments for these animals that they would kill in the name of like doing their job because it was like i guess out of necessity so out of respect for these animals they would leave these monuments out for them Mm-hmm. and like leave rice cakes and it would be a way to celebrate their life but if you had practiced mabiki you would see that these people would not leave a monument for their dead child out they would basically dispose of it in ways that we'll get to in just a second but the whole concept behind this and why they do this is because they do not see these infants or these children technically as a person yeah as a soul or fully grown or whatever and I, yeah yeah so according to japanese culture at the time it was really the belief that the soul of a fetus or a baby would not linger in the living world and if it did it wouldn't cause any harm or damage to where you know it it would be bothersome they said that really the only thing if the soul does tend to linger, is that you get a posthumous wail that you will hear. And there were some instances in the textbook where 
there was, I believe, like one flood that happened and this person could just hear the wails of like hundreds of kids. And it was just like, it's more of like haunting ghost yeah. lore and whatnot. But that's like the belief is that it's not going to be like a poltergeist baby coming at you and like, it, yeah. it's just like, Wah. Oh, mm-hmm. it, like super realistic and you know? yeah um and because of this belief you know it was very very common that executions would be performed on pregnant women and fun fact not so fun fact it would be until 1792 that pregnant convicts were allowed to give birth before they were executed for oh, their crimes shit. so it was like kind of a Long kept practice. Yeah, seventeen ninety two is honestly not that far. Off. Yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> not that long ago. Uh-uh. So, um, yeah, I didn't know that. I, I for some reason never wondered about that. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I should have because obviously women's rights have sucked. So, yeah. <laughs> well, it's like I have learned a lot reading this case. It's been very interesting, which is why I hope y'all don't mind. It's like not really a true crime one, but it's fucking like people are fucking but dying, um, bro. Yeah. It's a mishap for sure. <laughs> yeah. I am actually learning a lot and it involves the mishaps of our history. Yeah. Like and fucking having uh, being a parent right now and I'm just like I look at my little baby and I'm like holy shit. Wow. Okay. Now to get into what the heck the word mabiki means. So it is a farming tool originally that means to thin out. And it comes from this concept that (coughs) if you are farming and you are planting your seedlings, you can't have your seedlings close together. In order for them to grow properly, you need to pick a few out Uh to give it you know space to grow oh my god the metaphor is just crazy (laughs) there i something about asian culture metaphors i just well that's like their it's like their life lessons are like yeah yeah. it's very they're not um, that i know much whatever yeah it's it's very um i always like it so mabiki is a tool that is used in order to provide in their opinion the best outcome for your household because it is another cultural thing that with the people that you see that commit mabiki they have this cultural belief that if you were to have let's say more than two or three kids so you're pushing like three four five six you're seen as a feral animal because (laughs) (laughs) because only animals give birth to that many uh children or like let's say if you were to have twins or triplets or even like quadruplets during that time like they said if you for sure had quadruplets like automatically you were labeled a feral animal because only animals give multiple births at the same time so it's like very much uh you will see the theme that like follows along is shame or what they call hanji. So it's very much like they use shame to get these people to try and do what they want. Yeah. It sounds like a theme throughout history. Yeah. True, true, <laughs> true, true. So after a woman gives birth, essentially the midwife or the mom or whoever is with them, hopefully if someone is with them, would ask them the simple question, do you want to keep the child or do you want to send it back? Oh. Now... One of the most common and oldest terms for infant side, which is kogashi, is actually a term that translates to the return of the child to some other world. Now, when it comes to Japan, their world is the spirit world. So they believe that if they're sending this child back, they'll be sending their spirit or soul back to the spirit world where it can then later come back down when the time is right um i respect that it's like i mean i mean it's beautifully written (laughs) well you know for for the topic it's like they they really do justify it to themselves well yeah for their their um customs and and beliefs and their culture i respect that it's you know it's their beliefs behind what they do it I could see it. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm 
I practice it, but or, you know, yeah, condone. But it's just they, um, yeah, they. The writing and the research behind it, well, I think one of the reasons why it was so hard for me to find information on this other than a textbook is uh, people obviously don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> they don't They don't want to talk about their terrible, terrible past where they would kill their babies. Oh, and I'm sure it has caused generational trauma. Yeah. So a lot of it is... Um, like it's a lot of folklore is where we're getting the information. It's not like you don't see it in history. You see it in the folklore of how it goes. And a lot of the art that they later depict for this like anti, 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 uh, my campaign. But it's at the same time, like you do see, and I get into examples later on that, like some of these parents, I, I don't, know about all but some of these parents are really affected by what they are doing so it's it's like there's layers to this it's not all black and white like you think like you hear infant killing you're like oh but it's it's just like you you have to think back then um they they talk about one of the reasons why mabiki was used at a certain time was there was a famine that went on and it was a huge famine i believe in the 1700s that took out quite a few people and it was like these people were having to choose between like in order for me to stay alive i need to potentially like kill my child because i don't have enough food and that's like another thing where you would like hear the whales and it's just like there it's a lot of layers like the world back then was not how it was now so like don't don't get it twisted it's not like you fucking (sighs) yeah you 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 suffered quite a lot (laughs) Now, um, audio listeners, you can't really see my face, but my, I'm just like, my eyes are droopy and I'm just like, oh, hmm. it, cause you know, in a lot of cultures, the more kids you have, the more free labor you have. And, and, but in others, it's like, you ha- can't even afford that kind of labor. So yeah. you have to think about the mouths that you can and can't feed and, so it just brings another perspective to things. So. Yeah. And a lot of um, kids, like, would disease and all of yeah. that stuff, like, have a really hard time making oh, it to adolescenthood. God. So it, it's... Please don't even go any further on that. <laughs> and I will... Yeah. So it, it's You'll just all shit. <laughs> I'm already... <laughs> so fun fact, the first time that we hear of the concept of returning a child in history is as early as... 1584 when we have northeastern warlord date mas masume masumin uh. masamun who writes about sending a child back in the letter so the definitive line between japanese or sorry the definitive line between japan in this time of when a baby or like an embryo becomes you know a person was very different and not gonna lie like it's still a topic that we fucking debate about today right uh-huh. <laughs> not, not gonna get into that topic but uh-huh. you know what we're talking about uh-huh. <laughs> so <Texas>. yeah <laughs> so for mabiki the line for the child was drawn once the parents made the decision to keep the child so as soon as the parents said we keep it they say okay you can't kill this baby now you okay. can't no take back seas okay uh-huh like okay you got to keep it alive. Um, okay, I'll try. <laughs> and even this was not enough for their culture to consider this person a full human being. So technically, they would see the child as half in the living world and half in the spirit world until they're around the age of seven. And it is, <laughs> it's not the, um, it's not, it's not the... It's like the actions that, sorry, it's the actions that you commit. So like your first haircut, saying your first word, walking your first step, going to school, like uh, getting your first job, like things like that are what make you more of a person. So oh God. In, because of this, it was like expectations lead to disappointments, people. Yeah, it was way more sad for a family to lose, let's say, like their 16 year old than it would be for their six-year-old because they would technically like see that 16-year-old as more of a person like they had more to live like okay than they would the six but 
this isn't to say that, you know, Japanese people were fucking cold hearted with their children because they weren't. As soon as the decision was made that they would keep it, you would hear, you know, mom stay up all night, like doing typical mom shit. It's like as soon as the role that they decide to keep the baby is done, they are like any other parent. And but they weren't like that before. They just had the option to kill it. it it's it's really like it it's fucked up, but the way I see it is this is their form of abortion because yeah. they they didn't have a better means to it, and I, I, like I'm not gonna defend it, yeah, yeah. but it that's just how they saw it is there was no way for them to abort in a like safe manner, right. so this was really one of their only other options other than raising a kid and like having it. I know that's the part that kind of fucks me up is because obviously whatever decision you make, you feel like is best for you. But that time with the baby after birth, like until you like literally decide. Yeah. There's it's like, so there's some evidence that comes up that there is actually like a fucking group of women um, in one of the articles I read, they found that 16 women were living around these villages and basically, like, get in their motherfucking bag, breaking the glass ceiling, making moves, offering to kill people's babies for them. So oh. they would go to door, they would go door to door and be like, hey, do you need a Mabiki perform? Like, I'll do it for you. Hello, here's my card. <laughs> and as you could imagine, like, the it, the business took off. It was fucking popular like it, it was enough for all 16 of these women to live very comfortable lives so but what they point to is the fact that people are going out and hiring these women shows that the parents don't want to fucking do it because I'm sure like the mom is obviously like distressed it's it, it like they're not hard <laughs> they're humans at the end of the day I know it sounds so fucked up but like the the emotion is still there and you see it within the actions that some of these people take yeah, it's and just like their their culture is different than ours, and they just do and think things differently. It, it, yeah, it's kind of like I don't want to drop a bomb, but it's like then you argue what we're doing here, like because exactly. we're yeah we're still like trying to draw the line over here. So well, also people forget that we like... were we we were literally saying a couple of months ago like people were offering to do fucking live kill abortions like as soon as the baby's out in america so like this was a couple of fucking months ago we had mm-hmm. some congress people like talking about it so it's like yeah. if, if you're thinking that we're any better like we're not people it, w- to this day we still have it's not a line that's why this case is kind of hard to talk about hopefully too many karens don't pop off on me but i just think it's such a fucking interesting topic yeah. i so. mean it is touchy but it's important so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's history, Period. Bro. It's history, bro. <laughs> can't can't get mad at the past. You can only work to changing the future. Yeah. Hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying? Because I did kind of go off I, out of order. And I do believe the women charged. So now that I found it, the women charged around twenty monme and silver. Which, from, like, the five-minute research that I did on it, uh, converts, like, five yen to one mame, which one mame is 3.75 grams. But then when I converted that, it was, like, less than a dollar in today's currency. So, I, like, okay. I, 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 don't, like... I don't think I did it right. Um, so, like, help a girl out. Like, tell me tell me how much that is. But they would pay around 20 monme in silver, which um, it was enough for these women to, like, make a, a nice little lifestyle on. Okay. But when it came to the decision behind, you know, if you want to keep the child or send it back, it was not just up to the parents. Um, Actually, the grandparents could weigh in on it. You could even have your local villagers (laughs) weigh in on it and say, like, hey, I think you need to kill your child. (laughs) Because they um, have it's very much like a gift giving culture. And so during this time if you if your baby had a big ceremony for like their first birthday everyone in the village would go to your house and give you a really valuable gift and so they're like i don't have 10 gifts to give out this year stop having all these babies so like the village could give some slight input 
Right. Well, don't they always anyways? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the most common ways that we would see Mabiki being committed, definitely the most famous one was strangling or smothering. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, okay. They would... I'm sorry. That was not a laugh. It was like a whoa. Yeah. So it would be really common for people to take a wet type of cloth and just simply put it over the face. Um, you know, that one sounds pretty harsh until you hear the second option, oh my which God. is sometimes they would just neglect them. So they... Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. Okay, what? This one pissed me off a little bit. And I'm like, if your family did that, then like, no, that... It, I'm like, they should have had something against that. <laughs> but, okay, bye. But they just like don't see it as a kid. So it's just, yeah. But um, it was said that they like wouldn't even leave a blanket. They would just leave. So... Yeah. And in a room for days. Oh, God. Not... It wouldn't even... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very popular belief that if you left the child under the floorboard, that the soul would be able to find its way back to the house whenever they did decide to, you know, like, have the right child. (laughs) Was Uh I in a floorboard? (laughs) Well, I don't think you have any Asian in you, so... True. Yeah. But you never know. Never know. But, yeah. Another thing that goes into cultural beliefs is they would just simply put them in a uh, basket and send them off into the river. And this is the belief, goes with the belief that the river is the, basically, like, transports the soul to the spirit world. So, those were the most common methods that people would use from what I gathered. I couldn't really find anything else about oh it. Thank God. God. The last one was way more peaceful. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Because but I needed a, a, a downer on after the. Yep. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reasons why to Mabiki. <laughs> so if kids were born prematurely, this was like your for sure not surviving because it is seen as you are weak and there's no way that you're going to survive, you know, adulthood, which like, especially during that time when you don't have medical help. Okay. I kind of get it. But, uh, yeah, if, if you were born prematurely, but also out of here. back then it was hard to tell if you were going to be born with problems. I get it. But after you're born with problems, they're like, they make their decision, but yeah. fuck. And even so like deformity wise, you should like some of the, if, um, one of the examples that Lynn Femi gave was if your child had its umbilical cord wrapped around its neck, then that's like an omen that your child is going to be hanged later on in life. So that was considered a deformity and they, the parents would mabiki the baby. So they overthought the deformities and took every excuse to basically... It, it's like, I, I'm giving the list of reasons that like, you know, ethically they are probably giving to themselves, but I'm yeah. like, they... they killed the baby if they wanted to kill the baby it wasn't like you didn't really need a fucking reason people you just killed it if you didn't want the baby yeah you got rid of it and even like it and i'm not even saying that about the wife like some i'm sure sometimes like the if the family i know if um linfamy does again another video if you're a prostitute it's up to the brothel to decide if they want to keep or send the baby away so like the prostitutes or the geishas don't even have control over that so it's very much like fucking trauma (laughs) trauma all around yeah so it like like so many fucking layers man this isn't like i I did not do this for you to think like oh the japanese are so fucking horrible like no No. like we literally us americans were talking about fucking killing dead baby yeah i mean (laughs) us americans are no the circle goes around everyone everyone makes bad fucking ethical decisions sometimes yeah it's like no one is no one is safe and no one is safe on this podcast and we're coming for you we're not (laughs) even safe (laughs) or watch did i kill someone (laughs) no did you i for sure would have gotten caught me too. <laughs> they have my fingerprints in the system i'm done <laughs> that's what i said i'm like i've been in the system dude we can't yeah we can't commit <laughs> con- we can't we don't have that luxury okay because uh you know we're mishaps <laughs> hmm. 
since 94. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I had said previously, if you had fucking twins, triplets, quadruplets, only one of those babies was probably surviving. And above all else, if you're not a boy, ugh, you're done. But it's like not all that. If the ratio is off, right? Okay. then you're done. So like if you're a boy... But you're in a family full of boys. You're done. <gasps> you're you're not gonna be able to live because they want a girl. Even if it, oh yeah, because they want then the, they have to split they the want fortune. The, <laughs> yeah, they want the ratio <laughs> to be like. If the ratio was off, if there were like too many boys, then they would start killing the boys. But yeah. for the and most vice part, vice versa, of yeah. course. Yeah. Well, they just like wanted boys to begin with, but obviously you need women for the boys to mate with. So <laughs> some of the girls gotta survive. That's just right. <laughs> how men be the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and <Yay. laughs> of course, um, bad timing. So like, if it's unlucky numbers, or if they were born at like an unlucky time, you would kill the baby. Based like literally any reason. It sneezed the wrong way. It looked at me the wrong way. This baby's got to go. Yeah. Well, okay. So by the second half of the Edo period, the Japanese government, you know, begins to notice a problem. (laughs) And the only problem that would cause the government to stop or to step in and, you know, stop these people from killing their babies, which is the population became stagnant and even started decreasing in some parts. So yeah. they're like, um, where are all of our soldiers? We need to do something about this. So you see the Japanese government step in towards the second half or at least attempt to step in and start to tell people like, hey, maybe we shouldn't kill our newborns. Just a thought. Just throwing it out there. It's a, you know, humane thought. Yeah. You would see a lot of anti-Mabiki propaganda begin to pop up all around the place. You would see a lot of artwork depict, like, the women as demonic beings while they're giving birth or, I guess, killing the infant. Though these feminists just out here doing God's work, of course, never put any of the men in the artwork. Or right. if they did, they weren't demons. They were just like victims watching. Yeah, they were just like, oh my God, mm-hmm. my life is ruined. Yeah. <laughs> and then when that didn't work, they would try the shame or the haji route. They would start saying, you know, like even animals take care of their children. So for you to go off and kill your child makes you worse than an animal burn babies <laughs> they would try all of these attempts um they would even try compensating people so i know in one town i know in one town they gave a barrel of something <laughs> sorry i lost it in my notes but they gave a barrel of something for compensation for every like the first three years of your child's life they would give you a barrel per year they would also uh, give couples abandoned land, materials, tax-free exemptions. They would try to give a lot of, like, government aid to try and get people to have babies. Okay. But it didn't really work because we live in a fucking society that likes to shame people. So Always. It was uh, figured that... Oh, a bale of grain. There it is. But it was figured that around 10% of children in eastern Japan were on or like supported by some government aid during this time. But a lot of people would be shamed by their village, shamed by their family. And so you would see a lot of um, Mabiki being performed kind of under closed doors because Uh, you would see. Yeah. When it's shamed upon and it starts to happen under closed doors, that's when it becomes unsafe people. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Texas. Because this whole Mabiki, uh, like, debacle is actually what started the whole, like, birth certificate. It's not a birth certificate for them, but, like, the birth status reporting. So, like, you would actually see Japan start writing down, like, oh, this woman's pregnant. She has to go report it. And if it dies, well, why did it die? If it's born, what is it? Boy, girl, like, name, date of time aries whatever blah 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 so um 
you would see that you would have like a record keeping database with all of these pregnancies. And when we started to, or when Japan started to do that, you would see that the government officials would be like, wow, uh, there are a lot of like miscarriages or stillbirths going on during this time. And you would even see women go as far as making like a really public display of falling in public so that she would have that excuse of like, oh, everyone saw me fall. Right. That's why I had oh the miscarriage. God. And so, yeah. And like all of this was still going on. It really wasn't until they stepped in and tried to make it more like a patriotic duty. Like, oh, Japan's going to lose. And I want to say, because it took until around the 1800s for the population to, in uh, like mid 1800s for the population to start to trickle back up. And by the time 1880 hit, the government, like the population got to a point where the government was like, oh, okay, like I don't need to worry about it anymore. I know by the beginning of the Meiji period, a lot of families would have up to six kids in the household. So okay. it, and as we know now, like the population, it got really overpopulated and, and, and then, then they, they made like other rules about. <laughs> and now it's like no kids at all. <laughs> but they still noticed a high number of miscarriage and stillbirths, even when the government stopped interfering in the 1880s. And it wasn't until really the 1910 to 1940 range where you start to see this shift where Mabiki really isn't being performed anymore, though there isn't like a singular reason as to why. It's just the thought is, is that Japan had hit a really had hit one of its first modern eras. And so the thought was, was that, you know, killing your child is very uncivil and not something a modern era would maybe do at least the way that they were doing it so they so you see this kind of like sudden stop and then you would have in 1949 when japan would legalize abortions for any woman that basically like you don't really need the reasoning behind it was you could have a abortion if you were in any kind of economic or mental distress or like okay. need for it so very much like if you need one you you right. can get one mm. so when you see this become legalized in 1949 you see for the next decade that it's kind of eh. <laughs> but women just get a shit ton of abortions like bir yeah. birth control is not a thing at this point and it, it, is. it isn't well it's like well, maybe not in Japan. I, I keep speaking as if I know. I'm sorry. But if it's a thing, even the most basic, I mean, in years prior, usually it was like even the most basic thing, like a sheet of certain material. Oh, or, yeah, like the goat know? skin. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. But realistic for for birth them control. For them, it was sandpaper. So it, it wasn't, yeah, 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 like they didn't. From what I saw, there wasn't anything of, like, them using an organ skin or anything just, like that. It, it's not worth using it. Because they're, <laughs> they're, um, yeah. Well, like, <laughs> one of the, so one of the things that they did use was, like, an animal horn. Like, a, a an actual rhino horn. And it was said that, like, if this was used among geishas, that one video that Linfamy did that I saw. But if, um, like, the geisha didn't like you, she would make you, like, wear the horn. Because, like, obviously it's not pleasurable for the dude either because you're, like, yeah. fucking with a horn. Yeah, it's like a, like a strap-on dildo. Yeah, like. yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, like, uh, their, their, their methods of birth control were not, like, the pill, the IUD. You don't see that come out until later. And it's not until you see kind of, like, the push for birth control, uh, that somewhat modernized push for birth control that we see today is when you see the Japanese women stop using abortion as their main form of birth control and they start using the others. Um, but not to say that fucking modern day birth control is any better than some of these fucking uh, things that we used back in the day, but that is a, that, that's another episode for sure. Birth control. Life is what you make it. Birth control fucking sucks. Birth control is what you make it. <laughs> and they, uh, we need to figure that out. I so. mean, I've had a few that actually have been successful and I like, but then, then there's some that it just freaks me out. So yeah, but yeah, that is uh, my topic for today. I didn't really write anything 
to end it, but I, yeah, hope, I know it was, like, a little different than what we normally do, but I, I enjoyed it. I thought I it mean, was really interesting. I just want to, yeah, anything that pops into my mind that I'm, like, I got to talk about. I mean, okay, so, obviously, well, maybe it wasn't obvious at all. It was new to me a lot, like, of, I don't know a lot of the Japanese culture, yeah. and so, especially not culture dating 100 back sorry back up 100 <laughs> yeah no i get that i get that back 100 years hundreds of years mm-hmm. and so women's rights birth control having babies the death of babies whether it be intentional like you know abortion or and you know when i say death of babies i'm not saying like I can death of a fetus. <laughs> God damn it. We do. Okay. <laughs> the subject of babies in general, I guess with women is uh is always touchy, but I've never considered the history of it within Japan. Yeah. So I learned a lot. Yeah. I was wanting to do a topic on birth control for sure cuz that's just something that like I could Ugh. talk about for days the shitty options that we have, but right. when you start to think of like what happened in the past and kind of like the lack of information regarding infanticide in a lot of cultures is it's just an interesting topic, but it goes to show that like you know us humans have a dirty, dirty, dirty past, and I just love talking about it. So mishaps, we're all mishaps, <laughs> even if you don't want to admit it. She's a dirty girl and now she needs a shower. So <laughs> until next time, guys, be sure to follow us for all the latest and greatest on our social media pages. At R-A-R-W podcast. And be sure to send us an email if you want, if you want to hear a certain topic, if you just want to say hi, if you want to <laughs> share a story about anything. Please. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Red Rum and Red Wine Podcast at gmail.com. And if you're not already, go check out our YouTube if you want to see our lovely faces yeah. live in Instagram. And also, we are on Buy Me a Coffee, oh, you know, yeah. Good Pod. Mm-hmm. Just quick little shout outs to the little ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cheers. Maybe not. Cheers to. Uh, cheers to. Uh, fuck. Uh, hopefully, don't look at this episode because I do look like shit. But hey, next time, I'll, I'll try harder. Yeah, we're in a pinch, guys. Cheers <laughs> to not being in a pinch. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Bye. <Okay>. Bye. <laughs>